Our, our speaker this morning is Dr. Vaughn Wolfenfeld. This, this is Dr. Vaughn's first year at the Hill. He is the Dean of Faculty, an instructor of Religious Studies and Philosophy, a dorm affiliate in Wendell, and the boys' JV golf coach. He comes to Hill after serving, or suffering, for the past nine years at a safety boarding school outside of Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> Dr. Ron lives on campus just behind Foster with his wife, two kids, Ava and Jack, and their puppy, Tex. Dr. Ron. Wow, it's, it's rare that I feel like I'm tall all of a sudden. Um, but I'm going to add, since everything's a little abbreviated right now, I can go extra long, so stay, stay with me. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure you're aware of it, but as of yesterday, it is officially the most wonderful time of the year. Although, in my home, that means, you know, usually the, this time of year starts as soon as Santa comes down 34th Street and makes his Thanksgiving Day parade. And my son Jack begins wearing his customary Santa hat that he will wear every day until the 25th. Um, yesterday, if you'll let me nerd out for a second, uh, does anyone know what in the Christian tradition began yesterday? Advent. Advent, right. Advent comes from the, word, the Latin word adventus, meaning coming. And it's a period that's marked by four distinct periods of reflection before that coming arrives. Hope, peace, joy, and compassion. All right. So repeat after me. Hope, hope, hope peace, peace, joy, joy and compassion. compassion. The religious studies teacher in me is going to probably quiz you at the end of this. One more time. Hope, hope joy, joy, peace, peace compassion. See, I have one out of order. There you go. So, in order to explain this, I'm going to go back to over 2,000 years to the teachings of one of the most influential people in my own life and probably all of human history. Before his birth, his mother had a vision of a divine being visiting her by night and letting her know of a miraculous pregnancy. And that child that she was carrying would change the world, be a great liberator. Many assumed at the time this meant he'd be a political leader, while others believed that he would be a spiritual leader whose teachings would challenge and reform the predominant rituals and religious beliefs of the time. Well, roughly 30 years later, give or take a year, the meaning of that prophecy became clear when he would leave his family and begin teaching a message of spiritual liberation. He would gather a group of followers, amass an even larger following of people, and begin a movement that would eventually become one of the largest religions in the world. Of course, I'm speaking today, the person I'm speaking of today is Siddhartha Gautama, Gautama, the historical Buddha. The Buddha saw life, I'm oh, sorry, hope. The Buddha saw life as a battle against inevitability, the inevitability of hopelessness and suffering. The Buddha believed the only constant in life is change. And hopelessness stems from our desire either that circumstances and people won't change, not to change, or from the belief that circumstances and people can't change. Personal example. See, 24 years ago, almost to the day, it actually be tomorrow, I was beginning the Advent season in a world that was almost exclusively change. I was about the, I was the same age as many of you. And two months prior, my older brother, I got in the car with my older brother, our family minivan, and he was driving me to church on a Wednesday night for youth group when we were struck by a drunk driver. I was taken to the hospital, the nearby hospital. I had some minor injuries, a bad concussion, and so forth, but ultimately I was fine. My brother was not as fortunate. He was airlifted to Lutheran General Hospital in Chicago and would be in a coma for a number of months. So, at the beginning of Advent that year, I was left wondering, would my brother ever wake up? He would. If so, would he ever return to being himself? 
he would. He would be brain damaged and he'd functionally a quadriplegic for the rest of his life. Would my family ever be the same? It wouldn't. So the question became, how do you find a hope in that? Eventually I would. But it would take a long time. And the wisdom of a lot of a lot of people. Peace. See, the Buddha taught what he taught called the two darts of suffering. The first is pain. The first dart is pain. And that is any kind of physical or mental harm that happens to us. You can't avoid the first dart. It's going to happen in life. You're going to have pain. But then he said the second dart is what he called suffering. And he said, suffering is the dart that comes as a result of your response, your relationship to that pain. I think we can all relate to this in some way. Whether about college admissions that are coming up soon. We're not doing well in a class. Sorry to my good and evil group. Um, or shooting your lowest round, lowest score of the year in a golf match, only to find out the person you're paired up with shot 300 for the day. Sorry, Brooks. Or being, or even a person or a relationship that is changing and seemingly falling apart. To this day, I've never spoken to the person who hit me and my brother. In fact, I don't know if they think about my brother or my family at all. But even still, eventually, I learned that I had let go of the brother that was taken from me. And forgive that person for what they had done, even if they never asked for forgiveness for it. Once I did, only then, many years later, did I begin to come to peace and finally start to see the reality, reality for what it was. Joy. The Buddha also told another story. He really liked arrows and darts for some reason. But the Buddha told the story of one Buddha, a, a prince that was going through the wood, the jungle, and got shot by an arrow in the leg. And all of his attendants come around him and they were trying to help him, and he pushes them all away and says, Before you take this arrow out of my leg, I need to know who shot it, why they shot it, what clan they came from and on and on and on. And eventually he let out and died. The, story, the moral of the story, pull the arrow out of your leg first. Today, my brother is one of the most joyful people I know. And, though, and although he remembers a lot from our childhood, a lot, I've never seen him question why this happened to him or curse the person who did it. Rather, he lives completely in the present, not attached to the past or anxious about the future. I think there's a wisdom in this. Always be aware of the past and the future, but don't let worry, hatred, or fear keep you from living in the pure joy and the full potential of the present. Pull out the arrow. The Buddha taught, once you do this, once you learn to live in the present and pull the air out of your leg, then you will start to see others' actions as a result of their own worry, misunderstandings, and fear. Love, compassion. The response can then be compassion in trying to move, remove the suffering of others. Ending suffering must start with yourself, but it doesn't mean doing it alone. My family and I were shaped and changed by the love of so many people. We wouldn't have arrived there without them. And ultimately, that's why I'm here. As the dean of faculty, to support the faculty with compassion so that they can hopefully find peace and joy in working with all of you. And that's why me and the rest of the faculty are here, to support you with compassion and help reduce your suffering as you continue to learn and grow in the community. And finally, that's why you are here, to support each other and to help each other pull the arrows out of your leg. So, in summary, here we go, back to your quiz. What are the four elements of Advent? Oh, peace, joy. 
please stand for the dismissal. As we go through the next two weeks and the rest of this year, may you hope in the potential, may you find hope in the potential of change in a world that needs it. May you receive peace in letting go of what you can't change and embracing what you can. May you find joy in being in the present. And may you bring love and compassion towards others to help eliminate suffering. Amen.